Two years ago, Anne Hathaway was best known for playing teenage royalty in the Princess Diary movies, but the critical and commercial success of both Brokeback Mountain and The Devil Wears Prada proved that she has left her tiara behind. And now she's back in theaters as a young Jane Austen in the new movie, Becoming Jane. And Anne Hathaway, good morning. Hello, good morning. It's always so great to have you back here. It's always so much fun to be here. Oh, and congratulations. The movie's fantastic. Thank you. you, you <laughs> Thank she's you. like... I don't know. I've only seen 10 minutes of it. Is that <laughs> right? Was, you, yes. Yes. yes I, I have okay. only seen 10 minutes. I worked, I've never worked harder on a film. And um, as a result, I know that I couldn't help but be disappointed by what I see, even if it's wonderful. Mm. But, so I, I prefer to let it remain in my memory the way, the way it was when we shot it. Was and, there pressure and you're an American oh, coming yeah. in and playing this iconic English writer? There, there right? was. I mean, I think, and I, and I understand the pressure because when the casting announcement was made, um, I was the girl from The Princess Diaries, an American tackling not only a British icon, but um, a British genius. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure to some people it seemed, um, I seemed very ill-suited for the part, but uh, I like to try to surprise people. So I was, it seemed like a good opportunity to, to do that. Well, she, her books have endured for centuries oh, and Pride so and Prejudice, good. Sense and Sensibility, and they're all about romance and love and passion and let, she, she led a, a lonely life. She uh, never married. She never was proposed married. to three times. She accepted one proposal for one night only, but in the morning defected. And she did get pressure from her family, specifically her mother, who really wanted her to marry. Yes. Let's take a and, look at a clip. Okay. okay <laughs> I understand that our circumstances are difficult, Mum. There is no money for you. Surely something could be done. What we can put by must go to your brothers. You will have nothing unless you marry. Well, then I will have nothing. For I will not marry without affection, like my mother. And now I have to dig my own damn potatoes! I could live by my... Your what? I could live by my pen. Let's knock that notion on the head once and for all. She meets this Irishman named Tom Lafroy, who she met in real life, and we're not really sure about what their relationship was, so this is somewhat fictionalized, yes. but give people a sense of what happens between them in the movie. Well, in, in the film, well, let me start off by what happened in life that we have record of. Um, Jane Austen supposedly wrote between four and 5,000 letters in her lifetime, and we have 163. Tom Lafroy is mentioned in two of them. So we don't have enough information to draw a conclusive, to draw a conclusive story, to be fair. So what our film does is we take the evidence that we do have and we sort of imagine what would have happened if there had been a relationship between the two of them, if there had been sparks and an understanding and true love. If he had been perhaps the basis for Mr. Darcy. It's, it's, it's a delightful film because all of her books and all of her wonderful works are sort of incorporated into the film. But your next project that we're going to see is quite at the other end of the spectrum, Get Smart, Yes. right, with Steve mm -hmm. Carell mm -hmm. and your Agent 99? I am indeed. <laughs> I hope. I hope I've done what, it justice. What was it like working with him. Oh, he's the biggest diva in the world. He just, every single minute with the makeup and the hair. And I'm sure. <laughs> right, right. He's, he's heaven. And Steve especially, I was really intimidated to work with him because, I mean, he is a comedy superstar. And um, I can be funny, but I'm not necessarily Steve Carell. So, but you um, do have a great sense of humor. So well, I don't know I, how I, you I, kept a straight but, face. Um, that, was, that was actually really hard. But I went to him in the beginning and said, listen, we're going to be improving a lot. You have so much more experience than I do. So anything you want to, any advice you want to give me, I'd really appreciate. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, actually, the thing that was great about my audition was that I wasn't nervous to improv with him. I just kind of went with it. And then I had to say, well, yeah, that's because I didn't think I get the part. So I was really <laughs> relaxed. Now all of a sudden there's pressure. But, um, <laughs> but it, was, uh, it was such a wonderful experience. We had so, so, so much fun. Mm, we can't wait to have you back to chat about that. What, one more oh, thing. No, you I just to wanted say, to yeah. say, when um, a lot of people think that the film makes uh, Becoming Jane ma makes the, um, the assumption that Tom Lefroy was the inspiration for Mr. Darcy. I don't mm -hmm. think that's true. And I just, I think it's important to say that the film talks about all of Jane Austen's inspirations, potential inspirations that she could have drawn by trying to create an accurate portrait of what her life was like. So I don't think it's fair to say that she needed Tom LaFroy to inspire her writing, but simply that, um, it, it, simply that it goes along the lines of the argument made in the film, what forms an artist? Is it experience or is it imagination? And on that profound note, <laughs> which I one. love, <laughs> and you did such a great job. Oh, thank you. Anne Hathaway. Thank you. What a relief. <laughs> Always great to see you.